Hi, Mom. Yeah. No, can you pick up Chris after school? Yeah, I'm at, I'm at the doctor's. Mrs. Harris? Describe your symptoms. H hang on. Stress, headaches, nausea. Yeah, well, I work on Saturdays. And how long has this been? Equanimity. Balance your lifestyle. Felder, hi, this is Debbie. How are you? How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm sitting here with a cute, adorable dog, so nothing can get better. It doesn't get much better than that. Well, I know you have a passion for animals. I used to watch you on TV all the time, and you brought the, the uh, um, pet segment. And we do miss you on television. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're talking about when I was doing pet segments for CBS. You know, you can still see me on Dogs 101. There's a... Um, uh, animal planet. No, show. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Well, you are terrific uh, with your love for pets. Uh, I have uh, one of my children has the same kind of passion. It's something you're born with. So tell us about your love for pets and pets and how it manifests into them having a better life. Yeah, I grew up loving pets mainly because my mother loved pets. The our Turner family household was sort of like the neighborhood humane society. We would take in, in every abused, neglected, abandoned, half roadkill, anything, and nurse them back to health, keep them part, as a part of our family. So my love for rescuing an, animals really comes naturally, and it's it started from childhood. And it's so important, and although the pet overpopulation problem has slowly improved over the years, it's still a significant problem. Uh, Valder, there are 8 to 10 million pets that languish in shelters right now. Half of them will be euthanized, unfortunately, because simply there's no place to put them. And that's why I'm happy to be a part of this campaign called Long Live Pets. It is a collaboration between Nature's Variety Instinct and Best Friends Animal Society to raise the awareness of the pet overpopulation program, also to talk about the importance of the no-kill movement, of which Best Friends is a leader in to bring pet overpopulation down to zero. We want to encourage people when they're ready for a pet to rescue a pet from a shelter. And we want to celebrate rescue pets. So your viewers who have rescued pets, they already know the pure joy of having a shelter pet. Send us a photo of your pet. Upload it to longlivepets.com. And we want to make it a part of a film that Nature's Variety Instinct is putting together. That film is going to debut on April 17th on Nat Geo Wild. So those who already have a rescue pet can make their pet a movie star. That's great. Now tell me about the film that will debut. I think that's really interesting. That will extend it. It really will. So we want people to, if you don't already have a photo of your rescue pet, I bet you do because most people take a lot of pictures of their pets, uh, Get a, take a photo and send it in. And we want to just celebrate the pure joy and the love that you can get from a rescue pet. And here's the thing. A lot of people think that a shelter pet is inferior in some way, that there's something wrong with them and that's why they ended up in the shelter, that they're defective and that they might not make a good pet for their home. The truth is the vast majority of pets that are in shelters have one thing wrong with them and one thing only and that is they don't have a home. So you can find a great pet, you can even find a purebred at a shelter. Many shelters in, our, in your local area will work with you, they'll let you know when the breed that you're interested in comes through their door because they want to find homes for all those pets. It's just important to know what you're getting into before you get into it so that you can have a forever home for that great pet. Debbie, once you have a pet, whether you, you get it, I guess, a traditional way or, or rescue way, how expensive is it to maintain that pet? 
You know what, that's actually a very good question to ask, and that's a part of what should be considered before you get the pet. There are some things to think about and to do before you get the pet. The first of all, first of all, think about why do I want this pet and what kind of lifestyle do I have? If you have a very active lifestyle, you're out running, you're in the park, you're on the beach, then you want an active dog that loves to uh, expend ener energy. If you're a couch potato and there's nothing wrong with it, no judgment there, but you want a dog that's good to be a lap dog, that is okay to, to sit around on the couch and watch movies with you all day. If you have a very small dwelling place, then a really giant breed might not be the best idea for you. So it's good to think about what your lifestyle is and what type of expectations you have on the, uh, of the pet before you decide on what kind of pet. And you do also, to get to your original question, need to consider the expense. Your animal needs to be on a good, high quality, nutritionally complete diet. That is the single most important thing to keep that dog healthy throughout their life. And you need to take your dog to the veterinarian for at least a yearly veterinary exam. The average cost of a pet for a, an annual veterinary exam is two to $300, depending on where you are uh, in the country. And here's the cool thing. Your local shelter will work with you on spaying and neutering because it's important to spay and neuter your pet. Unless you're going to be a responsible breeder or you're going to show that animal, there is no reason in the world for that pet to be intact. As a matter of fact, it's healthier for them to be spayed and neutered. And of course, that's what's going to bring that pet overpopulation down to zero. Debbie Turner, you've given us some great information. Could you tell us where can we find this information wrapped up maybe on the web? Absolutely. For more information, just go to longlivepets.com. You can get all the information about the campaign, about pet overpopulation, about shelters, and you can also upload a picture of your rescue pet to become a part of that film that's going to debut on, on April 17th. So again, it's longlivepets.com. Will we see you on April 17th? Will you be a part of that? Well, we'll see. We'll see. But I really want people to send their pictures in and put in your testimonials, too. It's a great way to go on the website, longlivepets.com, and just read all the great testimonials of the wonderful experiences that people have had with adopting a shelter pet. Debbie, before I let you go, my, I want my audience to know that you had in a you, you have a great career now, obviously, but you had a beautiful career. You were in the pageantry field. <laughs> Could you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. Well, you know, a hundred years ago, I won a little pageant called Miss America. Uh, no, just joking. Back in back in 1990, I was blessed to become Miss America. I I entered the program because. I knew I wanted to be a veterinarian, and I grew up in a lower middle class home, and my family couldn't pay for the education I wanted. The Miss America program is the largest source of scholarship for women in the world, and so I used it to pay for my veterinary education. Worked out really well, but also led to the opportunity to be able to talk about responsible pet ownership and the joys of owning a shelter pet. What great inspiration for parents, especially as they look around for those scholarships. I want to thank you so much, Debbie Turner. You are a beautiful Miss America, and you're thank a great you. pet lover. Thank you very much for being my guest on the Valder Beebe Show. It is my pleasure. Thank you so much.